Inshallah, we will be reading from verse number 8 of Surah Al-Rum, which inshallah will be from page number 540 of the Noble Quran that we are using. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Awalam yatafakkaru fi anfusihim. ما خلق الله السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إلا بالحق وأجل مسمى وإن كثيرا من الناس بلقاء ربهم لكافرون أولم يسيروا في الأرض فينظروا كيف كان عاقبة الذين من قبلهم كانوا أشد منهم قوة وأثاروا الأرض وعمروها وعمروها أكثر مما عمروها وجاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فما كان الله ليظلمهم ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون ثم كان عاقبة الذين أساءوا السوء أن كذبوا بآيات الله وكانوا بها يستهزئون الله يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده ثم إليه ترجعون ويوم تقوم الساعة يبلس المجرمون ولم يكن لهم من شركائهم شفعاء وكانوا بشركائهم كافرين ويوم تقوم الساعة يومئذ يتفرقون فأما الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فهم في روضة يحبرون وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ فَأُولَئِكَ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُحْضَرُونَ فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ حِينَ تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًّا وَحِينَ تُظْهِرُونَ يخرج الحي من الميت يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويحيي الأرض بعد موتها وكذلك تخرجون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, all his companions may Allah bless every single one of us as well My dearest mothers and sisters in Islam we heard regarding the Romans in the opening verses of this particular surah last week and this week Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to see what has happened to the people before us. And he is drawing our attention to the fact that they have had more than us, they were more powerful than us, and still, when they belied, they were destroyed. Ultimately, I have to go, you have to go. But those who go, whilst Allah is displeased with them, have everything to be upset about, or have lost everything. And those who go whilst Allah is pleased with them, even if they go at an early age, have actually won. So we need to understand this very, very carefully. Because nobody knows the date of death. At the same time, each one of us knows that we have to earn the pleasure of Allah. So if we die whilst earning the pleasure of Allah, good news. May Allah make us from amongst those. And if we die whilst earning the wrath of Allah, then obviously we stand to lose. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. This is why Allah says, Do they not think deeply in their own selves about themselves, how Allah created them from nothing? And similarly, He will resurrect them. So that's point number one. Allah says, Resurrection cannot be doubted by anyone who has a brain, anyone who is sane. 
Allah created you from the beginning. Don't you look into yourself? Did you just appear here out of nothing? The blackboard we see in this room, did it appear here just like that? And the ceiling we have, was it here suddenly? The paint on the walls or the walls themselves or the floor or the carpet or the curtain, whatever it is, the phone you have, did it just pitch up there? Well, man is a much more sophisticated creature than all of the things we just mentioned. So if these things could not have just come up like that, remember man definitely did not just come up like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sound intellect and may he make us realize and understand. So Allah says, do they not see within themselves and think deeply that the same way we have created them from nothing, we will be able to resurrect them. It's even easier. So Allah says, Allah has created not the heavens and the earth and all that is between them except with truth and for an appointed term. Everything is going to come to an end. And indeed, many of mankind deny the meeting with Allah. Many people deny that they are going to meet Allah. In two ways this denial occurs. One is, denial really within the heart where people disbelieve in the Akhirah. You know what is surprising is, when the atheist or agnostic approaches death, he knows that I'm going to a, to a place, I don't know where exactly, but I'm going somewhere. He knows he's going somewhere. He won't be able to give you a defined answer. The only people who have a definite answer are those who believe in the scriptures that were revealed. So this is why we realize that even those who disbelieve, and meaning they disbelieve in all forms of uh, deity. They have absolutely no belief in anything whatsoever. They think that everything is completely natural. It happened by nature. We're going to be perhaps reincarnated and so on. They have great doubts in their hearts. Where are we going to go? It is a mu'min who is very certain. They know they are going to meet with Allah. So there are two types of disbelief in the meeting with Allah. One is, as I just mentioned, disbelieving properly or really in the uh, meeting with Allah. And two is, claiming to believe in the meeting with Allah, but the life is led in a direction which shows otherwise, or which is heading in a different angle, or in a different way, in a different direction. Because some of us claim, yes, we're going to meet with Allah. But what did you do? What's your deeds all about? Have you prepared for the meeting? Do you really believe that you're going to meet with Allah, or are you just saying it by tongue? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the tongue and the heart conformity and to make them in one track, one direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and grant us ease. Then Allah says, well, those who disbelieve and those who think that they're going to go nowhere, do they not travel in the land and see what was the end of those before them? They were superior to them in strength and they tilled the land and populated it in greater numbers than these pagans, than these people of Makkah have done. And the lesson is for everyone. And there came to them their messengers with clear proofs, with verses, with signs, with warnings. Surely Allah wronged them not, but they used to wrong themselves. So Allah is warning us all. Yes, the lesson might have been directed to the pagans of Makkah at the time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us all with this verse to say, look at the people before you. The warnings came to them, the messengers came to them, the verses came to them, everything came to them, reminders came to them, but they didn't turn. And, when, and they were larger in number, they were more powerful, they tilled the land more, they had more children, they had more power, more wealth. And Allah says, we still destroyed them. And Allah says, who wronged who there? Did we wrong them? No, we didn't. We warned them, we told them. If someone warned you to say, you know what, uh, there is something coming in this direction. And if you didn't take a warning, then it's your fault. Allah protect us. So Allah says in the next verse, And evil was the end of those who did evil. Those who did bad, how was their ending? It was definitely a bad ending. Because they belied the verses, the proofs, the evidences, the lessons, the signs, the revelations, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made a mockery of them. So those who want to make a mockery of the verses of Allah, the warnings of Allah, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, 
they will be leading an evil life and they will die according to the life they have led. This is why Muhammad ﷺ has told us that you die according to the manner in which you lived. You live as a Muslim, you die as a Muslim. You live as an obedient person, you die in obedience. You live sinful, Allah forgive us. One would not like to die in the condition of sin. And one would not like to be resurrected upon the condition of their death if they've died in the wrong way. This is why I say, and I constantly say, my mothers and sisters, take your time in salah. Read every salah as though it is the final salah that you are going to read. That is the uh, warning or the reminder of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to us. And take your time in sajda. Take your time. Relax. Spend a little bit more time in your sujood. Can I tell you? One of the positive points of that would be, you are increasing the chances of dying in the condition of sajda. And if you die in that condition, you are resurrected in that condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us, and may He make us from those really who can have a good death, and we can be resurrected upon a good condition with the right people, not with those who are wrong. Like the hadith says, you are resurrected with those whom you loved and imitated and tried to be with. So one wonders how those who try and impress and imitate you know the pops of the world may Allah protect us and those who are evil those who are satanic yet we have muslimin who try and follow them imitate them in every single way how will they die and how will they be resurrected may Allah save us and our offspring may he save humanity at large I mean so Allah says Allah alone originates the creation and he will repeat it then to him you will be returned. Which means Allah is the only creator. Allah is the one who made entire creation right from the beginning. And he will repeat the whole process again in whatever way he wishes to resurrect every single one. And Allah says, you will be returned to him. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ يُبْلِسُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ You know the criminals? Allah describes what will be their condition on that day. On the day when the hour will be established. The day of resurrection. The day of judgment. The disbelievers, the sinners, the criminals, the polytheists. Will be plunged into destruction with deep regrets and sorrows. And despair. They will be plunged into the sadness. Because they will be seeing reality. Then Allah says, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُمْ مِّن شُرَكَائِهِمْ شُفَعَا no intercessors will they have from those whom they used to worship with Allah or besides Allah. The partners whom they associated with Allah will not be able to help them. And they will themselves reject and deny their partners. On that day, they will speak out to Allah saying what we did was wrong or they will try to call out. Allah will say to them, Call out those partners whom you used to ascribe with me. Let's see what they do for you today. Those partners will be divided into two groups. Those whom themselves will be in disarray. And those who were totally free from this type of worship. And they will say, Ya Allah, we never ever told these people to worship us. Such as Jesus, may peace be upon him. He will be free from the association that the others have engaged in after his time. And placed him upon a pedestal that was on par with Allah. He will say, Ya Allah, I did not tell them to do this. They did it. I am free from all this. So he will be upon goodness. And those who associated him as a partner with the maker will be upon loss. So this is why it's very important for us to realize this particular point. Never ever render an act of worship to anyone besides Allah. We can repeat this a million times and a billion times. It is the whole purpose of entire creation. To worship Allah alone without associating partners with Him. That's my test. Whether it is a stick or a stone or a grave or a saint or a prophet. Never ever render an act of worship to anyone who is created. No one. The creator is totally separate from the created. The created is all on one side. Yes, there are certain creatures who are higher than others with the highest being Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa By all means, we respect. By all means, we honor. By all means, we praise. By all means, we have hope in the intercession of. There is no problem with that. But there is a problem. The minute we render an act of worship to anything that is created, no matter what level it is upon, we only worship Allah. Nothing, nothing 
can be worshipped with Allah or besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My mothers and sisters, that statement can be repeated a million times and a billion times throughout the day, every single day, as a warning for all of us. Because read the Quran, open it. It is clear cut. It is full of warnings of this regard. So this is why don't lose focus. Remember, worship Allah alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Goodness comes to you from Allah. Everything comes to you from Allah. Allah is the controller of entire creation. And Allah is in control of absolutely every aspect of creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He grant us goodness. So Allah says, on that day, no intercessors will they have from those whom they used to make equal with Allah as partners. Their so-called associate gods and they will themselves reject and deny their partners. Thereafter Allah says, once again, and on that day when the hour will be established, that day shall all men be separated. The disbelievers, the believers will be separated from the disbelievers. And everyone will be on their own. Allahu Akbar. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will judge you. The hadith says, every single person shall communicate with Allah. With no translator in the middle. No one in the middle to explain what you, what you are saying. Allah asks you, you're going to answer. What did you do? Why did you do this? Why did you associate partners with me? Why did you render act of worship to someone, to X, Y, and Z? Why did you not obey my instruction? Why did you not fulfill the obligations I placed on your shoulders? And so on. You need to answer Allah. One of the good answers is to engage in repentance. Ya Allah, I did wrong and I sought forgiveness. And here are my pages full, full of seeking forgiveness. This is why the hadith says, give good news to he on whose pages a lot of repentance is found or on whose page a lot of repentance is found. May Allah make us from those who repent regularly. Then Allah says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا These two will be separated, the believers and the disbelievers. As for the believers, as for those who believed in the oneness of Allah and did righteous good deeds, such shall be honored and made to enjoy a luxurious life forever. In a garden of delight known as paradise, Al Firdaus, Allahu Akbar. So, those who believe and did good deeds, they shall be honored, they shall be made to enjoy a luxurious life. Today, we prod our children to work hard at school. We have extra tuition for our children. Why? We want to see them doing well. When they win a prize, wow, we are proud of them. Alhamdulillah. Why? We worked hard, we encouraged them, we made them read books, we made them do this and do that. And we're so happy that they passed their exams. They made their grades to go to university to become doctors. We're so excited. Why don't we look within ourselves? Half that effort or a fraction of that effort would be required for you to succeed with the grades that will result in the ability to pass into the garden of paradise. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. My mothers and sisters, what better message can there be besides the message of Allah? We always say, if the words of Allah don't move you, nothing will move you. Nothing can move you. If Allah's instruction and His words don't move you, you think my words can move you? You think someone else's words can move you? The power of the word can only be that of the word of Allah. So anyone who utters a powerful word, it is because they have either uttered the words of Allah or are explaining the words of Allah to you. Those are powerful words. The most powerful words. If they haven't shifted you from bad to good and from darkness to light, nothing else can do you good. In fact, if anything else is shifting you, it can only be shifting you to the wrong direction. If anything else, some people say, you know, this music is shifting me. They've got good lyrics and good this and good that. It can only be shifting you to the wrong direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, grant us ease and goodness. May He open our doors. May He grant us ease. My mothers and sisters, we really need to do our best to try and earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ and as for those who disbelieved and belied our verses, our evidences, our proofs, they belied our signs, our revelations, they belied the messengers, they belied resurrection. Allah says, And those who belied the meeting of the hereafter, such shall be brought forth to the torment of hellfire. 
So those who did not believe, what do they expect? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this type of category. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. Allah says, فَسُبْحَانَ So glorify Allah. تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ So glorify Allah. Above all that evil that they associate with him, O believers, glorify Allah alone. When you come up to the evening, the sunset time, and when you enter the morning, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Glorify Allah at night and in the morning at the daytime. Now, some people think that this verse refers to a ruling that means you only need to pray thrice a day. That is wrong. It's absolutely absurd. Because the verse speaks about glorifying Allah, glorifying Allah in the evening and in the morning. So some say the afternoon is not mentioned. This is the glorification of Allah. Allah has not said that there are just three salahs a day. The five salah are clearly explained. And there are other verses which explain the prayer of the afternoon. So let us never ever be struck by those who say you've only got to play, pray thrice. And this is the verse of the Quran. Subhanallah hina tumsuna wa hina tusbihun. One could say it means declare the, the, the greatness of Allah or the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the evenings and in the mornings. So declaring the praise of Allah during the prayer or after prayer does not necessarily mean that it is referring solely to the prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from wrong belief. Remember, we believe in the Qur'an and we believe that the sunnah explains the Qur'an. We believe that the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu explains it, clarifies it and makes it clear and in fact has in it an explanation of all rules and regulations which will clarify what the Qur'an has come with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is why we are called Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The people who not only believe in the Quran, but they believe in the Sunnah, and they believe in the Sahaba, the group of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And we believe that they were all udul, all of them were just, they were upright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, unlike some deviant groups who believe that all the Sahaba were hypocrites, the Shias of today. They believe that all the Sahaba were hypocrites, and a lot of them exited the fold of Islam, besides just six of them. Now this is the belief of the Shia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such deviant belief. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us respect of all the companions. Whatever happened between them was between them. And we believe that they were all better than us. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Do not insult even a single companion of mine. For indeed, if any one of you who came later, were to spend the Mount Uhud full of gold, it will never equate even the handful of theirs or half a handful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to utter the term radiyallahu anhu with every one of the Sahaba's names. May Allah be pleased with all of them and may He be pleased with us as well. So Allah says, وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ He is the owner of praise. He is the owner of all praise. To Him belongs all praise. Allahu Akbar. They belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His are all the praises and thanks in the heavens and the earth. He created everything. So all praise belongs to the one who made everything at all. Completely everything. All praise belongs to Him who created the skies and the earth. So Allah says, And His are all the praises and thanks in the heavens and the earth. The angels are glorifying Him. The people are glorifying Him. The creatures are glorifying Him. The trees, the stones, the stars, the skies, the heavens themselves, glorifying Him. To Him belong the praises and thanks in the heavens and the earth. And they glorify Him in the afternoon. So this is now the Asr prayer. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًّا so now the Asr prayer is mentioned. And this is why we say, when you read a verse, don't just think that that's the only verse in the Quran. There are many other verses. And the, collectively, they make up the Sharia together with the explanation within the Sunnah, as well as the jurisprudence that is derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and grant us ease. So here Allah says, offer the Asr prayer. And when you come up to the time when the day begins to decline, 
offer the Dhuhr prayer. This is the interpretation of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. These are the five congregational prayers made up within these two verses. So verse number 17, speaking of three of them, and verse number 18, speaking of two of them. And this is the interpretation of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, mentioned in Tafsir al-Tabari, and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was a Sahabi, and he was a great Mufassir of the Qur'an, and he knows better than I do and you do, what exactly these verses were referring to. And there are opinions of the others as well, which make mention of the praising of Allah, glorification of Allah throughout the day, the night, the afternoon, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, before and after the prayers, the compulsory and obligatory prayers, and even during those prayers. So these verses would mean, fulfill your five daily prayers, and they would also mean that praise Allah, declare His praise morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from those who declare His praise, not only by mouth, but even by our actions. Whatever we do, whatever we say, may Allah's blessings be upon us. So Allah says, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ Remember, He brings out the living from the dead. Like He brought man from, di- from dust, from clay. And He brings out the dead from that which is living. Allahu Akbar. Allah gives so many examples and here Allah's examples are so great. You know, the egg that comes out of the chicken, for example, at a stage, it is considered dead. But it came out of something living. And after that, Allah removes something living from that which is dead. So the chicken comes out of the egg again. One asks, what came first, the egg or the chicken? Do you know what's the Islamic answer? The chicken. Allahu Akbar. Why? Allah created the chicken. And thereafter, He created the system. Just like man, Allah created man and thereafter he created the reproductive system within man that gave rise to every single one of us. It's clear in the Quran. So the same applies. The creatures of Allah that give birth or that lay eggs, the creatures were created and the eggs were the result of the plan of Allah that was in place for reproduction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant creatures that Allah created. Allah created man in a perfect posture, as Allah says. And this is why we constantly say, my dearest mothers and sisters, look at your posture. Allah created your feet, your hands, your face, your lips, your eyes, your eyelashes, your eyebrows, your pupils, your iris. Allah created your your fingertips, your nails. Each one is in the proper place. Can you think of a better place to put any organ of yours, even the hair that grows, can you think of a better place to put it? That's a question. So Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We created mankind in the best of postures. Wow. Think of your toes. Would you like, or would you think that there is a better place to place the toe? Can the toe be in the middle? Think of it for a moment. Can the toe be on the sides, the big toe? What do you think? Can the thumb be where the baby finger is? Think of it. This is why Allah says He created and He has perfected the creation according to what He wants. Subhanallah. He knows. Allahu Akbar. Fa'ahsana khalqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the best way. He knows. So this is why we cannot compete with Allah. Don't think it was just a coincidence. Your heart is in a specific place. There can be no better place to have your heart. Allahu Akbar. You know, sit and ponder over it. It is an ibadah to sit and think about these things. Because sitting and thinking about the creation of Allah, which makes you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that is in fact an instruction. Allah instructs the believers to say, Ponder over my creation, so that you can understand the greatness of the Creator Himself. So Allah says, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ As we said, He brings out the living from the dead. And He brings out the dead from the living. And He revives the earth after its death. And thus shall you be brought out and resurrected. Let's pause there for a moment and give a few examples. Example number one, like we said, you have the egg that comes out of the chicken and you have a chicken that comes out of the egg. Number one. Number two, you have what is known as a 
the birth of a child when the mother has lost its life. We have had it. We have had instances where an animal is born from its mother who died. That's Allah's qudra. It's his power. And you have sometimes the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He creates how he wills and how he wishes. You have a stillbirth. So a living creature gave, bo- gave birth to a creature that was not living. That's Allah. So Allah does what he wants as he wishes. And he knows his plan. All this is included in this verse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You look at what Allah does to the earth after its death. Take a look at this beautiful rainy season. Check the grass. When you're coming on an aircraft landing, you notice how green it is in this season. And then come the season where there is no rain. In our case, the winter is dry. In the dry winter, you will notice, subhanallah, that the land is all dry. Who gives life to that land later on and how? Allah causes the rain to fall. And suddenly, it becomes green. The earth is given life once again. The grass grows so tall it becomes a bush that we need to cut it in order to appreciate sometimes. That's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, that is how you will be resurrected. Don't think that now that you have uh, become decomposed into the soil and returned to it, that we are unable to resurrect you. My mothers and sisters, you need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and it's Allah really who owns the heavens and the earth. Next week, inshallah, we will go into the verses where Allah makes mention of uh, all the signs of Allah. Part of his signs, he created you, he created spouses for you. He makes you sleep. The dreams you have, signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lightning and everything is a sign of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May he open our doors. May he grant us ease and goodness. And really, may he make us from those who realize and understand. And may we be from amongst those who can learn a lesson from his word. For indeed, it is not easy to, it is not easy to fight the devil who comes in the path of us and listening to a good word. I always say that a good word comes from Allah. And the devil would like to distract you from listening to the good word. Because when you listen to the good word, you will recognize the devil and be able to stay away from him. So there will be many distractions in the path between you and the good word. Only those who fight those distractions will be deserving of hidayah and guidance. Like Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who struggle and strive to come to us and for our cause, they are the ones whom we shall open the doors of guidance for. We will open the paths that lead to us. For those who struggle and strive to come towards us, recognizing the devil and his plan and the fact that he will distract. There will always be distractions. People will tell you, don't go, don't listen, don't do this, don't do that. Don't worry. You understand, is this the word of Allah? Well, then I deserve to listen to it. I will fight shaitan and I will fight the distractions. And I will make sure that I will listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word is because that is how I will become a person who is motivated and spiritualized to turn to my maker alone so that when I die, I have no regrets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may we not be from amongst those uh, who are suffocated uh, both in this world as well as in the next. May Allah forgive us all until we meet again. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.